Picture of you guys. It's not on yet. Hey. You'll see it. Two minutes. Two minutes. It features the essential energy core maximized for time travel. It's also equipped with several exterior cameras for multiple points of view. <gasps> hey there. Welcome to the Garden of the Gods. You guys are about to embark on an epic journey through time and space to see for yourself just how those red rocks actually got there. I'm your pilot, Captain James Kerr. No, not Captain Kirk. It's Kerr, K-E-R-R, Scottish, actually. <laughs> but you can call me Jim. And this, this is the Geo Trekker, a wonder of space and time travel technology. Ready to go for a ride? Yeah. Hold on. Now, to begin the story of the red rocks, you have to go back about a billion years. So here we go. Hold tight. We're going to be moving pretty fast. Let's see if we can get you guys a better view. Wow. Wow. We're deep in the Earth's crust now, about five miles down, a little over a billion years ago. You can check out our location in time and space with the indicators on your screen. That's red hot magma out there, melted rock. The magma is cooling and crystallizing to form Pike's Peak Granite. The rock base that forms the core, there are many layers of rock on top, including eventually, of course, Pike's Peak, but not quite yet. Whoa. Now we're locked into the newly formed Pike's Peak Granite. This granite is mostly made of three minerals, quartz, feldspar, and mica. The pink color comes from the feldspar and various iron minerals. Let's see if we can bust out of here by traveling forward a few hundred million years. Above us now, seas are rising and falling over millions of years, depositing relatively thin layers of limestone, sandstone, and shale on top of us. We've traveled over half a billion years. It didn't feel like it did. The geological forces have raised the ancient range of mountains called the Ancestral Rockies. They were lucky. Now, most people don't need to be here as this is happening. This is kind of a big deal. That, my friends, is the power of erosion wearing away those mountains. Let's take a closer look. It's 300 million years ago out there. We're surrounded by chunks of rock, sand, and silt carried down our rivers to form a mound of gravelly sediment known as an alluvial fan. An alluvial fan is a fan or cone shaped deposit of sediment crossed and built up by streams. It's like a river delta, but on land at the base of the mountains. Layers of sediment will pile up on top, eventually compressing these particles, which harden to form a sandstone rock now called the Fountain Formation. Remember this layer. It eventually comes to be some of the red rock formations seen today in the garden, including the three graces, the Siamese twins, and balanced rock. But we'll get back to that later. Let's keep moving. There's more sand eroded from the ancestral rockies. The wind is carrying tons of it, and we're flying around with the sand. All that blowing sand forms sand dunes, as you can see out there. And that sand, buried by even more layers, eventually formed the sandstone layer called the Lion's Formation. And today, that sandstone makes up the highest rocks in the Garden of the Gods, including the North and South Gateway rocks and the Sleeping Giant. Stay tuned to see how. The ancestral rockies are now buried by their own eroded debris. It's about 250 million years ago. Where the tidal flats of a shallow sea. Those, those weird looking lumps out there? Those are stromatolites, a primitive life form consisting of single cell bacteria. The ancient sea has retreated. Huh. Can you believe that? Over 100 million years just passed by. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? We're now in the Jurassic period, 
a peak time for dinosaurs. Hey, look right there. I spot a few below. You're seeing Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, and Camosaurus down there, as well as some pterodactyls flying in the sky. But we're not getting too close to sticking around. We're headed for the Cretaceous period. <laughs> Ready? Let's go. What's that out there? Let's take a look with a 360 degree hand. Here in the Cretaceous, there's still some dinosaurs around, but now some different ones. Anyone know what that beast is? Well, of course, it's a Theophytalia cari. A species of plant-eating dinosaur unique to the Garden of the Gods. You can actually see a cast of a skull in the visitor center when we get back to the present. You might be thinking we're a new kind of vegetable. That's so tasty, huh, buddy? See you around. <laughs> this part of Colorado is going to be part of a huge body of water called the Cretaceous mm -hmm. Sea. The Cretaceous Sea mm -hmm. is split by Santa North America in two. The land we're sitting on? becomes a rock layer known as the Dakota Formation. In 1878, a Colorado college geologist by the name of James H. Hare finds a fossil skull of an undiscovered dinosaur in the sandstone of the Dakota Formation. And more than a century after that, paleontologist name is fine, Theophytalia Cara. Wow! 30 or so million years are blown by just like that. Colorado spends much of its time underwater. Those big swimming creatures are Plesiosaurs. You'll also see some mosasaurs and sharks, as well as ammonites, relatives of the modern day chambered nautilus. Volcanic ash, silt, and remains have settled on the seafloor. It will eventually become the rock layers known as the Benberg, the Nyberg Formation, and the Pure Shale. Today, the Pure Shale is over a mile thick. Not to mention, the Visitor Nature Center sits right on top of it. In the sea flow fish, we've got some big, hungry animals flying around the boat. Those aren't overgrown seagulls. They're pteranodons from the late Cretaceous period. Let's keep going. We're oh, staying cool. We're good. This, this is what we came for. It is about 60 million years ago. We're rising upwards as plate tectonic forces raise the mountains called the Laramide Rockies. The precursors to the Rocky Mountains we know of today. These forces are also bearing the fountain and lion sandstones we visited earlier from horizontal to vertical. They're on the way to becoming the red rocks in the park today, but not quite yet. We're resting on the now greatly warped layer of the fountain formation sandstone. The Laramide Rockies are eroding around us even as they rise. Fast forward another 20 million years or so, as wind and water remove weight, the modern Rocky Mountains are rising. It's now about 2 million years ago. <laughs> We're getting there. The Earth is going through an ice age. During most of this time, the area that is now Canada and the northern U.S. is covered by massive sheets of ice. The ice sheet doesn't go as far south as Colorado. But glaciers form on Pikes Peak and other tall mountains. <laughs> Look over there! Mammoths are roaming the area. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Oh. Really mammoth. <laughs> For many thousands of years, wind, water, and ice continue to erode the mountain in the lion's rock layers. The stronger sandstones stand tall, the weaker mudstones become valleys, and gradually, the rocks take on the astounding forms they have today. Oh, guess what? We made it back to present day. Millions of years of geological forces, along with wind, water, blowing sand, and freezing ice, shaped the rock around us into the Garden of the Gods. This formation is known as the Cathedral Spires. Want to see more of the park? Here we go. Wow. Look at how the sandstone stands straight up. Those are the three graces. And that is ballast rock and steamboat rock.
You wanna go see the rocks? Yeah. You wanna go see them? No, we can't climb them. No, we Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.